What's up guys, Hatter here, and this is part one of a two-part video where we're gonna be playing with Gundams and LED lights. Let's go. So last week, I found these pre-soldered nano LED lights online. I'll leave a link to them down in the description below. They were super affordable and came in 10 different colors. They were neatly packaged and organized, ready for your Gumpla or miniatures applications. For this project, we'll be using yellow and red. These tiny lights are powered by a three volt battery or three volt AC adapter and come with about six inches, giggity, of wire to work with. They also put out a great deal of light without fussing with resistors, transistors, resistors, any of that stuff. They are small enough for high-grade Gunpla applications, as you can see, and smaller crafts where those bigger LED units or even wireless induction LEDs are too large. Now, if you know me, you know I also love using rare earth magnets in my scale modeling as well. Link to my video on those in the description as well. And in case it wasn't clear, I also love Gundam, like these 1-400 scale Gashapon Gundam minifigures. They're made of a soft, pliable plastic that's easy to work with, and they conveniently have 1.5mm peg holes in their feet as well. Perfect for my 1mm diameter rare earth magnets. Link to those in the description as well. I'm going to link a lot of stuff in the description. So what I learned recently is that these magnets actually conduct electricity fairly well. So we're going to create a tiny magnetic base powered by a 3 volt battery that lights up these LEDs when the figures are snapped into place. I'll be using the innards of this tea light to house the battery and switch for the base. First, we'll have to disassemble the figures. We'll start with the Zaku because A, it's cooler, and B, it should be easier to get at the mono eye inside. I'll be drilling a hole for the light to pass through where the mono eye is. Next, we need a channel for the wires to pass through the torso, so we'll carefully drill a hole from the neck down through each of the leg holes. and then we'll pass a rigid wire through to ensure that we have enough room for the wires to come out. We'll do the same thing with each leg. This part is particularly tricky as there's not a lot of room for a mistake. Fortunately, we can use the peg hole in the foot as a pilot hole for the drill. Again, we'll ensure that we have enough room by passing a rigid wire through after we've completed the hole. Now that we have all of our parts, we can begin assembly with the LED light. First, we'll carefully thread the positive and negative leads down the neck hole and out the left and right leg holes, respectively. We should have plenty of extra wire to work with, but we'll trim it down later. Thank you. 
I test fit the head onto the LED unit. This not only helps hold the head in place, but also prevents me from accidentally tugging the LED too far into the torso. Next, we carefully thread each wire through its respective leg and out the peg hole on the foot. So once that's done, we trim off most of the excess wire, we'll save some of it for later, and try to carefully solder the exposed wire onto the tiny rare earth magnet. As you can see, I scorched the foot a bit. Not a lot of room for mistakes on the one millimeter surface. Once the wires were magnetized, I tested out the circuit using a three volt battery in the T-Lite. Perfect. Next up, we repeat the process with the Gundam. This was going to be a lot trickier for a number of reasons. First being that the legs are much narrower than the Zaku, but more importantly, having to carve out two eye holes instead of the single mono eye at this scale. So I took to using my hobby knife and sort of punched them out at an angle. Drilling out the torso holes was pretty easy and went exactly the same as the Zaku. and we tested out the channel using a rigid wire as before. After getting the legs sorted and threading the wires through, I mounted the head over the LED as we did before with the Zaku. Finally, we had to work up a base. I used this D&D mini base that both figures could stand on and traced their foot positions where I'd mount the magnets. I ended up not getting the placement perfectly right anyway, but that's okay. I wired up the T-Lite switch using spare wires from the excess that we cut off of the LEDs. Next, I made my pilot holes for the base where the figures would stand. I drilled holes in the base for the magnets on the end of the battery switch, which ended up being slightly too big. With the battery pack and base complete, I threaded the positive wires through each of the left foot holes and the negative wires through each of the right foot holes so that the figures could stand on either side. Not that it mattered in the end because their feet were spaced apart slightly differently.
With that done, it was time to mount the magnets in place. I thought about using super glue at first, but opted for green stuff epoxy putty because it would be a little easier to work with and I'd be able to sort of push the magnet through and support it from underneath so that it would make cleaner contact with the magnets in the figure's feet. I even used some larger magnets on the top side to hold the smaller ones in place while I worked. The green stuff did extremely well, and while the bottom looks a bit of a mess for now, it was time to test out the circuits for the final build. All in all, I was extremely happy with how this turned out for my first project combining magnets and LEDs, and I hope you guys like it and found it useful too. Stay tuned for part two of this video where we scale it up using high-grade Gumpla and larger, stronger magnets. I want to send a special thanks to my supporters on Patreon for sponsoring these builds. If you guys dig this content, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you later.